I suppose hundreds of people pass this building behind me every day and they would know it as St. Patrick's Hospital. They're totally unaware that just before the famine, in 1841, behind me here this building was the admittance office of the workhouse, the Waterford workhouse. The first stone was laid in November 1839. It opened in March 1841. The first inmates, as they called them, were from the House of Industry, which stood at where the tax office in the Glen is. The other place they came from was the Mendicity Asylum, which stood in a small lane that ran between St John's Bridge at the waterside into Railway Square. The story of the workhouse is an extremely interesting story, sometimes horrific. I'll tell you that as we go along. This is what the Waterford City Workhouse would have looked like when it was originally built. The walls would have been almost 15 feet high. It was enlarged many times due to the amount of people seeking admission to the workhouse. This is the admissions building. Over the window was the date it opened, 1841. Here the master of the workhouse or the board of guardians would decide who was to be let in and who was to be denied. Here we see the class of people who sought admission to the Waterford workhouse. Most workhouses were composed mainly of women and children. Most people, men and women, who went to the workhouse were not professional beggars, just ordinary working people who fell on hard times. Here you can see how ragged the clothes are on this family. It was typical clothing for most poor Irish at the time. All reports say that most women and children were in a state of nudity. As depicted here, they would have crowded around the workhouse gates looking for admission. However, not all applicants were successful and in fact were means tested. Once inside, the families would have been separated until such time as they eventually left the workhouse. And inside, the men went to the men's quarters, the women to the women's, the boys to the boys, and the girls to the girls. There was total separation in the workhouse. If the boys were, as we say, disruptive, they would be sent to a men's prison which stood in Hennessy's Road. Here is a typical punishment given to a young 12-year-old water boy from the workhouse in 1853. He climbed over the wall of the workhouse and stole some bread from the kitchen because he was hungry. He got a month and a half on the treadmill, depicted here, and was stripped and got 40 lashes. The treadmill was a cruel punishment for men, don't mind for mere children. Another feature in the workhouse was the capstan mill, which what was looked like a ship's wheel with long arms coming out of it, and which six to twelve men would push it round and round and round to move large stone wheels which would grind corn. In Waterford Workhouse, women and children often worked the capstan mill. Many believed that the workhouses were too top-heavy with women, especially young women, and it was decided that they would be sent to Australia. Starting with the workhouse orphans, between 1849 and 1850, they sent 4,175 orphans to Australia. They were sent on ships like the ones here. The journey took over 77 days. Many young girls were sent to the interior of Australia to be wives for the farmers and gold miners. And they swapped Irish mud cabins for huts of bark in Australia. But it didn't stop there. Soon Canada was another destination for Irish work health orphans. In 1863, a former Irish revolutionary who was now Canada's Minister for Emigration, shown here, his name was T.D. McGee, he wrote a letter to the Irish newspapers pleading with the government not to send any more young girls to Canada, implying that many of them could not get jobs and were turning to prostitution. Upwards of 200 Waterford girls were sent from the Waterford and Dungarvan workhouses to Australia and Canada. In 1876, the Sisters of Mercy nuns were sent to the Waterford workhouse and we believe brought a degree of compassion to the otherwise harsh regime. In recent years, it was feared that St. Patrick's Hospital might be downgraded or closed, and a group of activists and trade unionists staged a weekly protest. Their heroic efforts saved the hospital, and it is currently being rebuilt and enlarged. So ends our little trip around the history of St. Patrick's Hospital, Acca, the Waterford Union Workhouse. Today, it's no longer called St. Patrick's, it's called the Waterford Residential Care Centre. Hope you enjoy the little trip.